Hi, I'm Sarah Dugdale and welcome to a book hotel. So I've been writing a book blog since about 2013 over at bookhotel.co.uk. I've gone through various phases and stages um, up to now um, and names <laughs> over the years. Um, had some fallow phases where I was doing my master's degree or uh, where I first became a mum. Um, I had my little boy last year. Um, but I have loved blogging, I still love blogging, but I don't have the same motivations that I used to, um, especially to blog as often as I used to, but I've also found that I'm just not reading book blogs at the moment, and there seems to be a particular kind of arrogance to me <laughs> in writing a book blog and expecting people to want to read it when I'm not reading them myself. But when I do am doing, a lot of is watching booktube. I love it. So today to give you a little bit of an introduction to me um, and what you can expect to see me talking about on this channel, I'm going to talk about some of my favourite books. Um, I've got a little stack that I've just pulled off my shelves, Whoop. which are now going everywhere. Um, so talk about some of my favourite books and also just what I'm reading right now. Um, so we'll start with some of my favourites. So first one off the top, this is Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. So I first read this when I was in university. I'd seen the film, I think about a year or two earlier, um, and I absolutely loved it. And then I realised it was a book, ordered the book to my uni halls, and I remember just disappearing into it. I adore this. It's kind of got everything that I want in a book, in a way, in that there are characters who I absolutely adore and would defend to the death. It's it's as you can see it's it's a, a fairly chunky book it's i think just over 500 pages yeah just over 500 pages which i really like a big book that i can disappear into um and really you know sing into and you're not about to run out of pages imminently um it's also got the kind of dual timelines thing so you have um in this you have the uh timeline which is in the 1980s in which um Evie, is her name Evie? Yes, Evelyn Couch meets Ninny Threadgood in a nursing home who then starts telling her all these stories about Whistle Stop and Ruth and Iggy and the Whistle Stop Cafe and the good old days that they used to have. And you go from there and you just learn about the whole community in Whistle Stop. And I just adore it. There are so many little stories that are all become part of a bigger story and give you this beautiful picture. Um, there are some really, really funny moments, and there's also some absolutely fantastic, uh, fa there's also absolutely fantastically written heart-wrenching moments. There are, I mean, I trigger warnings for domestic abuse um, and uh, racial violence, um, but I just think Fanny Flagg writes about America of that period and um, America of the South of that period really really impressively. I also just found out that she has written a sequel um, called The Wonder Boy of Whistle Stop which follows Bud Threadgood, so that's Ruth's child um, who you do see grown up in this but so The Wonder Boy of Whistle Stop picks up his story later and I'm very excited. That arrived yesterday actually. I'm very very excited to pick that one up soon. Um, I need to be quicker about this or this video is going to be really long. Um, next one on my pile is The Long Way to a Strange Angry Planet, Small Angry Planet, excuse me, not a Strange Angry Planet, Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I think that this book is an amazing marriage of comfort and cosy fiction with sci-fi. Um, if you know of any other authors who do that, please tell me, because I adore Becky Chambers. I could have picked any of Becky Chambers' books, really. Um, the, the sequels to this in The Wayfarers, um, series so let me just look at the other one on the shelf behind me a close and common orbit and record of a spaceborne few actually of the three possibly record of a spaceborne few might be my favorite but it's really really hard to pick because they're all so good and so different um becky chambers again it's the characters that make me adore it characters who i love and want to be friends with in real life um this is also a really lovely love lily this is a really well paced book it just moves at quite a leisurely pace like it's quite even throughout the book but not in a way that makes it 
boring or dull it moves in quite an episodic fashion um, but I really enjoy that for comfort reading as well as just um, for letting you explore a different world Right, sorry, there was an Amazon man outside, but he's not coming here, so it's fine. Um, this is a book that has many devotees. I am one of them. I read this basically every year around Christmas time, so I will be reading it again in the next few weeks. This is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Um, I'm sure if you're watching Booktube, you probably know about this book, but it is historical fiction, magic, sparkles, strangeness. Um, I love it. I would like to go to the Night Circus, please, very much. I am a dedicated river. Um, I think Erin Morgenstern is fantastic at the setting, at giving you the the feeling of a place um, and of just making you want to sink into it. I will admit the ending of this book I can never quite make my mind up about, but I keep going back to it, so clearly it doesn't bother me that much. Um, next on my list, on my little stack here, um, is Orhan Pamuk, A Strangeness in My Mind. Now, again, I could pick any of the Orhan Pamuk books that I've read, but this was the first one I read. So possibly that's why I'm so attached to it. Um, but so this is set in Istanbul. Um, uh, the main character, Mevlut. Um, catches sight of a girl with whom he falls in love after a secret courtship of letters passed by his cousin, she agrees to elope with him. Um, as they rush to catch a train to Istanbul, Mervlet realises he has been misled. So essentially, he marries not the girl that he saw at a wedding and fell in love with, but her less physically attractive sister, I believe. Sister or cousin? Either way up. He gets married over the next few decades. It just follows the fortunes of that family. Um, it evokes Istanbul um, in a way that I, I had never read anything set in Istanbul before I read this. I really hadn't read much set in Turkey at all, I don't think. Um, and I just think Orhan Pamuk is an amazing writer about human beings and about places. And frankly, those are the two things that underpin any good story. <laughs> Um, and again, as I said, I love a big chunky book that I can sink into, and this is exactly that. Um, and so the last one I've got on my pile for the moment. Um, obviously, it's impossible to give all of your favourite books ever, um, because that's always changing. It's just different depending on what day you ask. But the last one I've got for the moment is Kate Atkinson, A God in Ruins. So this is the sequel or companion to the very, very, very popular Life After Life, which I do have. It's up there in the corner. You possibly can't see it, possibly out of frame, but I do love Life After Life, but I prefer this one. So this picks up, so Life After Life followed Ursula Todd in all of her, um, who every time she dies, every time something goes wrong, she then comes back, does the life again, and somehow next time it goes right. Um, this follows her brother, Teddy Todd. Um, it does some similar things with time and playing with time and how it moves in the novel. I found this really, really interesting in terms of how, when we get little glimpses into Ursula's story, the ways that her life clearly has played out to other people, because of course from within her own perspective is how we see it in Life After Life. Um, so that was quite exciting. But also just what I remember about this book is reading it while I was working. Um, I was My office was literally two minute walk from my front door. Um, and every lunchtime, as soon as I finished at the end of the day, I was rushing home because I was desperate to read this. Um, again, characters, big hearted, um, slightly twisty, turny plot, never really sure where it was going. But actually, to be fair, with all of these books, I think the common thread <laughs> is that they are all so well written and have such believable, wonderful characters in that it really didn't matter where the plot was going for me I was just had that confidence in the writer that I just am willing to put myself into their hands and let them lead me wherever they're going to take me so that's a little bit of um my kind of absolute favorites um, um so then to talk a little bit about what I'm reading right now 
Um, I am currently reading, and will probably finish in the next day or two, The Mothers by Britt Bennett. Um, so I've been seeing her second book, The Vanishing Half, um, talked about a lot, like absolutely everywhere. Everyone thinks it's amazing, which is very exciting. But I knew that I also wanted to get The Mothers, and therefore I would like them to be next to each other on the shelf, which means getting The Vanishing Half in paperback, not hardback. So while waiting for the paperback of The Vanishing Half, I got The Mothers and have started. I don't currently use bookmarks because I have a toddler, I have a nearly two-year-old um, who will steal bookmarks out of any book that I leave them in, he will just yank them straight out of the top, so I tend to have to just remember where I am or what page I'm on or uh, I'm at or what plot twist <laughs> I'm up to. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this um, and should finish it in the next couple of days. It's not a very long book but actually it's taken me longer than I thought to get to where I am but I think that's just because some of the subject matter is quite intense so I'm actually finding that I want to put it down and just let my brain like process what I've read relatively regularly um but yes absolutely really really enjoying this and then the other one that I'm reading at the moment is one that I am reading with my mum although she tore off way ahead of me because she's far more practiced in reading classics um and she is now rereading it um <laughs> and enjoying it more she says for just knowing who everyone is and wh where it's going to go um which i think we can all sympathize with that feeling of reading something and not being able to luxuriate and savor the different elements because you just need to know what's going to happen um but that is middle march um i'm got to be honest I'm real proud of myself <laughs> for reading this. Um, it's So for this year, I did not set myself a goal of how many books I was going to read. I actually set my Goodreads goal to one because I wanted to take the pressure off. And what I wanted to do was get to the books that for ages I've been looking at or when they come up in conversation and I go, oh yeah, I should read that. I, I'm sure I would love that. And then never read. So I made myself a list of those books at the beginning of the year, which you can find on my blog, I will link down below. Um, and I wanted to get to some of those books. I knew I was not going to read them all in the year. I think I've read, I think this will be the third? Gonna have to check. Um, so I've not read loads of them, but I should finish Middle March before the end of the year, and that feels like an achievement. Um, so I am currently just over halfway through, so I think I'm, yeah, about 550 pages into the 920 pages of my edition. Um, I already knew that I liked George Eliot before I, I'm going to put this one down because it's actually quite a heavy book. Um, I knew that I loved George Eliot before I started reading this one because I read Silas Marner when I was at school and I adore that book and I've reread it I think only once since then but having after reading Middlemarch I'm definitely going to be tempted to pick that one up again because Although it can be hard going in the first half, where Silas is um, is not his best self, let's say. Um, once he gets to the second half and Effie walks onto the page, oh, my heart. My heart. Um, so yeah, so I already knew that I liked George Eliot and I really wanted to branch out a little bit. And Middlemarch was the one that I knew the most of, that I'd heard mentioned the most and it, I was also very intrigued by this quote from Virginia Woolf that's on the back of my edition um which is described by Virginia Woolf as one of the few English novels written for grown-up people um so I really wanted to find out if I was a grown-up person according to Virginia Woolf and I'm quite excited to say apparently I am because <laughs> I'm really enjoying it um I'm finding it really funny which was not what I'd expected going in um Mrs Cadwallader is hilarious. I live for her stinging insults. Um, but also, these characters have my heart. Dorothea Brooke, I love her very dearly. I would really like to give her a hug, um, especially right at the moment. I won't mention where I am. In case any of you decide to go in for Middlemarch. No spoilers. Um, this is one that I'm actually managing to use a bookmark in. Um, which is a bit of paper on which I've doodled Books Are Magic, which I did during the last meeting I had with my work book club. Um, 
but that's because it's smaller than the book so it can hide in the middle of the book and the toddler can't get at it um so yeah so those are the two books that i'm reading at the moment i do have a habit of picking up or this year i've had a habit of picking up a lot of books and having loads of books on the go but i'm trying to remind restrain myself and remind myself that what that actually results in is not finishing any of them because then i sit down and i get the time to read and i go oh what should i read which one because they're all so exciting and then i just don't read anything and i just sit on the sofa watching netflix which is not what i want to do so i'm trying to keep myself to two books and because they're so different because i've got like classic and contemporary i think it's working quite well i also middle march have been flitting between my paperback and audiobook um which i'm finding works really well the audiobook is narrated by i can't remember her name i'll stick her name like on the screen but she's great um and does the voices of the characters really really brilliantly um so i've been finding that great fun to listen to with um, i currently drive for hospital appointments um three times a week um so i've been listening to it in the car when doing that and it's great fun um and also makes it move along in some of the because i mean you know it is hard going sometimes some of the political bits of the plot i can struggle with a little bit but with the audio i can kind of plow on through and generally get my brain into gear with them so that's a little bit about me um drop me a comment down below tell me uh, what you're reading right now and what some of your favorite books are and let's have a chat about books because they are the best thing in the world with the exception of my toddler because i like him quite a lot <laughs> um and hopefully i'll be back again soon with another little video thanks bye